crunching the three problems uh, that are usually occur when you are solving for a fixed wing model. <coughs> so for the model airplane, for um, like any aircraft you have been informed of, you probably uh, have not uh, have not have knew a lot of um, uh, information about it. Uh, like you know the how the lifts are generated and lots of connected systems and lots of things about their structures, material and all the stuffs. Mm, but <coughs> it's uh, harder to make them uh, to connect uh, it's harder to connect them together and to make a uh, uh, a solution that's, that could uh, consider all of these parameters make it consistent and make some easy optimizations. So uh, when it comes to design something, uh, instead of instead of simply drawing it, because you know it, it, it's a it's a with computers there it's a lot there's a lot of way that you to draw a, a plane of uh, the geometric uh, to define their geometric uh, properties, but it's harder to solve for a plane. Uh, Rather than uh, rather than just just draw a random uh, playing with random parameters, and the three problems usually occur is that first it has too many variables, so um, for a complex system, you basically get a lot of parameters. Uh, say, let's just say I got a cube here. Uh, maybe when I when I'm designing some crafts. Like if I get a cube, then simply for the geometry of this cube, I got uh, three dimensions of of, uh, of choice: the the width, the length, and the height. And for and there are more things that's linked to this graph. Say the the volume, the volume, the surface area, and uh, the mass of the cube, and the uh, rotational inertia of the cube also changes. Uh, when these uh, when these um, geometric property changes, and also you have to think about material and stuff, and for uh, that that's but that's only for a cube. So um, for a very complex uh, system like a model airplane, you usually get a um, <coughs> more than a more than hundreds of variables, and then each variable is actually uh, it's actually a dimension. And uh, and if you f if you think of it, um, when I'm when you're solving for a high-dimensional system, it doesn't make a lot of sense if I if I say uh, say there's a imagine there's a 100-dimension uh, space on my hand that that doesn't basically make any sense. So there are too many variables, and second, there's some lack of existing data and relationships mm, because not all. Relationships are deterministic. There are something that uh, some partners are that are unknown or are not very uh, not very accurate. Say you can only get a rough est estimation of a lift of a, from the surface or drag from the surface or its o its overall performance if you only got uh, get the uh, empirical. Empirical formulas uh, instead of the deterministic ones, and the third one is that you get an unclear target. So um, <laughs> when you are solving for some kind of uh, variables, you always aim for aim for something like I want the speed. I want speed to be faster than some reasonable uh, high number, or I want uh, um, I want it to carry more weight. Maybe it's uh, there's uh, it, it can enable larger takeoff weight, or or it has a better uh, performance, like uh, it like it's easier to control, or it has a good stability, good controls, good tuning system. But there's um, if you're simply aiming for one of the variables, then it's uh, then you get a very extreme solution, which there are lots of uh, there which cause lots of problems for the other things so uh, but there are lots of ways we could crunch this uh, for variable things you could simplify simplify the questions 
uh, and uh, extract uh, the the key terms. Uh, for example, the the, con uh, the constraint analysis. And you could, uh, although you can't save solve for the 100 dimensional space, at the same times at the same time. But uh, if you get some restrictions, uh, you could imagine there's a uh, there's a point which consists of all of your solution. Uh, which consists your concept in the high dimensional space, and uh, if that uh, the point the point is going to be projected to some two D two D spaces or three uh, D spaces or some lower dimensional spaces, um, there are some boundaries. So although I can't really know where the point is, I can I can know from this uh, on this plane it can't it can't be in this area. It must be in this area, and they it helps you get a rough core solution. And uh, and also it suggests the criticality of criticality of the princ principle you are using. Uh, a second for a lack of existing data, you could move from low fidelity models to high fidelity models and uh, and uh, make some reasonable good guess. Some sometimes engineers do that. Sometimes the um, people that who, uh, people who do the, the the practical works like to. Uh, tend to use the uh, their practical in experience and uh, and that sometimes is a, is a good idea and uh, uh, but you can but I mean if you if you get the dimensions I mean if you get the concept and all the parameters settled you can always generate a full analysis because generating analysis uh, from concept to uh, from concept to its uh, performance. It's 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 a lot easier than than solving for a concept from the conf from the uh, performance, and the third one for the unclear target is the unclear requirement of the performance. Uh, you could um, use the cross optimization to optimize for some most efficient points. Uh, say for for the same say for the same uh, plane, I want to use the. Uh, the highest, the the, uh, the highest uh, lift to drag ratio for its motion, and I assume that uh, using this is using the higher uh, lift to drag ratio or, or uh, better efficient some other points for for the cross optimization. You could get a reasonably good, uh, reasonably good uh, plane, and you could do sensitivity sensitivity analysis, see if I change. Change this bit, and uh, some factors may may becomes uh, some performance may, may get better, and the others get worse. But uh, is it uh, it's it's up it's up to the designer and uh, some regulations to to decide whether this kind of trade off whether it's just kind of should trade off should be now or not. And you can also use the existing model as the comp as your competitors and uh, use the existing thing as the uh, the input of the requirement, and you go from the for the first model. So that's basically how this works. And to prove that I'm not lying, I just do a bit of demonstration of the models. So I've got there. A uh, number of demonstration. Uh, the the first one is the it's called constraint analysis. So the constraint analysis is one way that we could solve from the requirements to the concepts. Um, let's just uh, I suppose if you if you define if you find this package, uh, you find this package from GitHub basically. Uh, And there's uh, there's a pre-release, although although the real version haven't been uh, posted yet, and that that should uh, that should have most of the most of the files that that are needed. But uh, since I already done that, I just open up and then load the package within the R environment. You could use R GUI or uh, you could use RGUI or um, R Studio. I'm just I'm just using R Studio because I'm because I'm lazy basically. <coughs> and uh, 
I will clean this floor up because I um, have done some other works. Now, now if you uh, you have to load package before you do any work, so let's do. Uh, actually, if you haven't installed package, you have to go to the go to the, um, my GitHub, and there will be uh, information on how to how to uh, install it for uh, for either. Um, XP over OS or, 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 or Linux computer because they because our work for all the pr platforms I'm and I'm building in, um, into the ours uh, as a as a as a package and packages uh, the extension of the packages are extensions of uh, programming language so that that, that will automatically work uh, automatically work for different platforms. All right, so to load library, we just go library. Now my version is not a pre-release, but I'm gonna release that. Uh, so the first thing is the uh, there there's usually some uh, constraint. The, the some default some default uh, structure of uh, of uh, data structure. So this is a this is a list, but also um, but also a. Um, Classified object, and the class and the class of it is a, called a constraint. So when you go create, create something, and it th this this function takes a takes a parameter, and if I go constraint uh, constraint default, there's a default value. But because uh, actually we should say the class the class of this the class of this is a constraint. So, although it's it's displayed like a like a list, it is a constraint list as the next three objects. So, I, if I create uh, create this constraint to default, usually we call constraint default, and then uh, and here's your default, and then. The print pack, uh, the sorry, the print fun function automatically uh, uh, compresses the the um, tidy up, uh, tidy up the the, the uh, num numerical and text output a little bit so that won't look too messy. But there's there, there's still a lot of things going on. You could say when the you could you could see when this um, weight to surface area changes. This. So this is the wing loading. So how much weight is put on each uh, uh, area of a certain amount, a certain area, how much force is put on certain area of the, uh, of, the, of the wing. And then there's the requirement, requirement for a thrust to weight ratio, uh, which, uh, which is corresponding to each of the uh, uh, the the weight uh, sorry the weight to surface area ratio, and that's for turning to at some at some rate of turning and uh, you could you could actually see there in the in the default function we use the we use the wind loading from five to fifty now the the these standards are just uh, SI the the center of the international physics center for um, for uh, force force divided by error, which is just uh, Pascal or Newton per um, square meter. Uh, a lot of a lot of books use the 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 airplane. Uh, I mean the the units the specific for specifically for the aviations, but uh, I'm just using the standard unit. Because it sometimes uh, it sometimes makes more sense to for a smaller plane, because a quantity like one newton or a, a, or a, um, a length the length of like one meter makes more sense to some makes, sometimes makes more sense to the modelers, um, and it's also it's also easier to uh, it's also easier to. Uh, Use use uh, more uh, physical uh, conditions there. 
So use the standard the standard international unit, and uh, I got the least. I'm assuming these are the my assumptions. Uh, my assumptions, assuming that uh, the minimum of the standard of uh, sorry the, the drag coefficient zero point zero two, and uh, for this turning, so the I'm, I'm saying that the the plane the plane is turning at some point. Uh, uh, at this point, turning it, the velocity is 20 meters per second. The height is 200 meters. That, that that's basically not not much different from the height of zero because we don't we don't usually consider we, we don't always consider the uh, the air density change due to the height change uh, in our modeling. But uh, I, I made this function just to be a more a little, little bit more uh, technical. And this k is. Uh, K is the the uh, the K is the lift induced drag sector. It's not a coefficient. It's a lift induced. Uh, but you could always uh, you, you could search for this term or look at the manage later. So these are basically my requirements, and these are requirements. Uh, you have lots of requirements, but you could also at uh, at one time you could only solve for for the conditions for two. Um, for uh, so for for the conditions for uh, two e sorry for two dimensions here so if you want to out output something as as well as creating something you could go c a is con and just uh, create create so i create could use this create constraint it's different from you if you create directly from the constraint default because you recognize it, it, it recognize its type and it directly use the correct method for create for creating this function. So if I want to plot it uh, basically before any plotting you have to make the plot panel of, uh, it's not this one before any plotting you need to make this plot region feasible you could plot this constraint and as you see this um, the legend doesn't look nice here so I put this uh, put this uh, y is 8 maybe so yeah it looks a bit better and then uh, the different lines suggest a different crit quality. So as you have a limit of uh, wing uh, wing loading, so the wing loading can't be too low. Or if it, the wing loading is too low, you have trouble flying the strong wind. If it's too high, you, the, there must be a structural damage. And between some points and the, these lines indicates the. F Feasible region. So the feasible region are just uh, it's just uh, within this area because it satisfies all those lines. Of course, there are more things going on here, but uh, it's just just to a really real simple case. And this red, little little red point you find here is the uh, it's the open uh, it's the uh, uh, Particular is the particular optimization for thrust to weight ratio. So at this point, when the when the uh, when the wing loading is about 50, then you you can use the least powerful motor to power the same uh, power the plane with the same uh, kinetic restrictions. All right. So, but this is just this is just the course. This is just the course. Uh, uh, this is just the course uh, solving here, and you have to use more specific things. So, uh, actually, a lot of these parameters actually come from the previous study. Um, but let's just do a few more of these. So, this is the case for instead of a model plane, this is the case for a general aviation plane from the book uh, General, Avi General Aviation Aircraft Design by. Uh, Snorri Goodmanson and uh, I had uh, had a little bit of trouble converting them to the 
to the um, evasion standard unit. So if you run this code, this, that's defining your cruise velocity. You just input the list there, climb, and then take off, and then service ceiling. And then in case one, I do a, do a list of these things. Note that uh, these are just this one has one two uh this one has six restrictions including uh the turn the turning state energy level climb cruise v service ceiling take off distance and but this one just have five of them and it's it's totally okay if you want to take take away one, uh, like just take out one of them and uh, do just uh, do for five of them you just assign these five as the function you want to apply instead of applying all cases because if you don't specify, sub specify the function there it's gonna create it's gonna try to create it's gonna try to use all of the function here uh, so I could write it as a try function but so far it's it's uh, that's the only way of doing this so I created that and uh, saved that to CA1 and uh, if you want to display you want to just uh, print this or just yeah so that's uh, and another thing is that it, it, it actually fold the it actually fold the um, result here if you want to if you want to full data frame it's here just dollar sign out okay it's just the just the optimization minimum point optimum uh, weight to thrust weight uh, sorry the thrust weight ratio and you could plot it that, that that one is different so you actually see this point doesn't necessarily occur at the uh, the maximum point of uh, w the uh, the the, the uh, wing loading and you could uh, say that's that's my uh L line that's my minimum speed of flying and of course it's a simple calculation which doesn't make any more sense and it's but for different uh, for the different planes you actually get uh, different restrictions here so let's uh, if you can see for another example there's, there's uh, the long, longer range FPV thing by Zhenghen Su and there's uh, and if you load that's the criticality of uh, th that's the requirements and uh, if I run for this one that requirement is a bit different so these lines are so this line might occur a uh, bit differently and you, you don't have to remember them all but you have to uh, if you want to use this uh, the most necessary part is to get input in the correct format and then And then you could optimize that, and uh, that's the, you could also save the optimization result as O1, so that you, maybe you want to use the maybe you want to use the data for the next step of calculation, right? So, so you could um, guess the event, initial input to solve the question two, uh, and then. If you go to the menu of uh, this one, all right. So you could actually generate something using this air alpha link default, which is based on thin airflow theory, and which is not always true, but uh, a good uh, but a good uh, set to start with. And uh, you could create that property, and then you, you uh, it yeah, and it follows full sum the result and if you want to get full results get here and uh, optim that at k max which is thrust weight ratio max uh, cd mean which is the minimum of the drag coefficient and this is one this that one is at the maximum value of the maximum value of uh, cl uh, the lift coefficient so we are taking off landing use the cl max actually the CL is close to the CL max, and uh, when you're cruising, use the K max. 
right and do also you can plot that zoom in a bit sorry and if you and if you zoom in a bit you will see how the CLCD changes okay and uh, the problem of that this model is yeah and then you could uh, view that from more expect uh, more aspect and uh, green line suggests uh, the green line suggests the uh, local sorry the local optimum uh, sorry the local optimum of the the so as the lift to drag ratio, and then, but it's not it's not only for the, I mean it's not only for the experiment uh, experiment uh, empirical data. You you could actually set the workspace to a folder, and uh, in this folder I have some uh, I have some pullers that are actually saved generated from other software probably from or probably from experiments and then I could load it and then and then convert it to a therefore airflow uh, sorry the airflow dataset so you could actually download these folders from the website that's called uh, Airflow tools polar or you could uh, polar diagrams so that's uh, the, it not only have CL and CD but also center of uh, sorry pitching uh, sorry the, the pitching moment uh, and the pitching moment coefficients and then, then a lot of other a lot of other things or as it's generated by the virtual uh, virtual uh, wind tunnel. You could also use uh, some some other stuff, uh, some other tools like uh, computational fluid dynamic uh, tools to generate these uh, coef to get these coefficients or get it from empirical data. Or you could do it. Uh, you could um, actually make your own air fill with this X flyer file, which is also a um, Uh, which is also a tool, so you you could uh, so that you could save it and then sort of um, and then store it as a fill, and then sort of run this uh, XFO. But uh, but uh, what I want to show is that these these software usually take a relative longer time for generating these things. Mm. And uh, if you get the correct coefficient for the uh, empirical empirical formulas, that's gonna give you a, a faster prediction, but with lower quality and uh, um, with lower quality and uh, lower lots of things. And you define that and uh, it calculates for you, and it generates basically about the same same thing. <coughs> And then what's important here is that you could with the discrete data that ex that is exported from sorry that's imported from other source and you save it as a whether it's a txt or a, or a, a csv file which is called which is uh, for comma sex separate values you could store it as a, a data sorry data frame. Uh, Table that's in R and convert that to a, a, a alpha out class. So when you create something out of it, you could uh, see its class. That's just the property of R, by the way. Alpha also the the optim thing. Although that's also a line function, but it recognize that this. I'm going to optimize an, an, uh, an output of an uh, angle of attack analysis this because I'm going to um, sorry analyze a uh, this one and that's gonna use the correct method for uh, 
yeah, for uh, use the correct method for the correct type of data. So you kind of recognize the physical properties, but it's not really, you know, it's not really physical property. That, that's just make your, uh, that, that's just, just, to, just to make the coding easier. And you can optimize that. And uh, fetch alpha, CL max. Uh, fetching for fetch the largest uh, coefficient. That's not symbolic solving. We will, uh, we will develop some symbolic things that doesn't that doesn't need to extract things from the database and there are some functions that y you could use to fit this data with some models and kind of simplify and smooth these things but uh, I'm just I'm just uh, demonstrating the simple ones so this version fetch alpha CL which I think is I think I think it's a quite useful one because if you get a if you get a CL and uh, if you get a CL it's uh, actually from the kinetic, uh, uh, sorry, from the kinetic thing. Then you can also check how much, how much thrust you need when you get, when you get some kind of weight and speed. Uh, apparently, so some points are not in converged. Can I get a plot? Hmm? All right, so let's just forget about the X fire stuff. Uh, and then there are more types of uh, low fidelity model, uh, like the weight analysis of the electric plane, which is which is a lot better to show it within the Excel form instead of uh, our program. But I will show that later. And uh, analysis. Non-dimensionalization of stability. You could uh, that's the part of the analysis uh, which use the uh, empirical models, and uh, the trade-offs analysis in parallel computing because um, because you want to uh, what we thought for there is, uh, here is just one core solution, but you want to uh, say if I change one parameter somewhere, how is gonna it is gonna change? And there's so many parameters to change and you could have a lot of time playing with that and uh, because these are all functional programming you can call a function by just typing something in brackets instead of writing the lots of codes behind it I think that would make it more powerful we will get to that uh, later so um, another model that I want to, to um, show you is the um, it's, uh, it's the motion sorry I didn't so even for the same plane, it's got a different speed and different things here, and uh, this is kind of a... Uh, so I defined the motion and the layout and... sorry... Um, uh, motion least... Uh, e... Angle. Okay, uh, let's just uh, do. Uh, but, but actually, I uh, try the uh, uh, cr try creating a cr try creating a plot somewhere, and then this is this is just uh, pro uh, this is uh, still not up in a published uh, version, and. Uh, Where is it? Uh, oh, sorry. Didn't track that into the. Had some problem making the package. <laughs> so, this is just a, a very new function, a very new stuff about uh, how to create a thing after. So, you don't have to run this when the package is uh, built, but I'm, I'm just gonna demonstrate some of the p possible. Um, some of the. Let's say just some of the pos uh, possible uh, things. Let's go rid of the thing uh, So basically, you get a. <coughs> so 
uh, the, the the idea before uh, behind this thing is that for the kinetic models and uh, for the kinetic model and uh, the the force the relation <laughs> the linear relationship of uh, force um, force acceleration and uh, mass and uh, there are lots of deterministic in that uh, deterministic things and in this stuff and uh, lots of interesting points that could be symbolically solved although they are these are very particular points that these points can actually uh, these points actually is, uh, suggest some very useful properties so I get the sorry, um, V motion least angle and uh, then from th the angle is just a climbing angle in terms of uh, which uh, the the unit is in degrees and this is the least this is the least velocity you must uh, have to maintain the lift I'm assuming all the lift is used and uh, if the lift is going to be efficiently used what's the what's the what's the uh, angle that's going to give you the largest uh, climbing rate and uh, I got lots of columns here but but again this these are um, a high dimensional high dimensional uh, analysis what's important here is that this data frame is essentially 2D because there's just one there's just one independent variables which we, uh, from which we can do a lot of things so if I yeah so so actually if you see there's a crate something called crate beta and uh, yeah if you go say the default I'm just using the default value because it takes less time for demonstration and you could say see that's that's my assumptions and you could plot it which is actually quite um, exciting because um, you see it's not it's not the it's not when the degree uh, the, the angle of uh, the angle of climbing is uh, when the angle of the climbing is highest then the the climbing rate is high as that. They actually there exist some local max at that point. That's for for example for this point, uh, the V Y is the largest. When the lift is used, lift is fully used. So, um, but yeah, it's just a particular solution. And uh, these these lines, these purple lines, suggest the restriction of the force and power of the 